Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels. Today is repo day. You're going to start to see a lot of repossessions in the near future because of market adjustments and overinflated vehicles. The market has been crazy the last two years and people have had to overpay for cars. Well, things are starting to readjust back to normal, which means people are going to owe too much on their cars and you're going to start to see a lot of repossessions in the very near future. Today's video is a part two of our previous video where we bought a 2015 Chevy Tahoe sight unseen from the repo lane at a dealer auction. Today, we're gonna try to bring it back to life and teaser, we're gonna sell it at the end and I get to tell you if we lose money or if we made a crazy amount of money. No idea, you're gonna have to watch to the end to find out. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels, let's get going. the next day and rich from next level mobile detailing who actually is probably watching this video on our premiere hello rich is here so he's there and he's here watching him do his own work which is awesome i called missy rich i got this truck i don't have the time for it can you get over it next day he's here what's cool about it is he's got his whole setup the whole system is all in here what do you got water tank compressor generator holy moly you got everything Awesome, that means I don't have to do any of the work. Now this Tahoe, it's pretty rough. There's some scratches down the bottom, down the sides. Do you think this is at all repairable? Yeah, I mean, some of these are coming out. This might be a little bit uh, difficult. But... Some of them look yeah. topical. I hope, we'll see. Yeah. So paint correction will. There's dog hair like caked in everywhere. I'm surprised you come back when I give you stuff like this. <laughs> do you vacuum it first? Do you extract it first? Yeah, first vacuum, get most of the junk and debris out then i can like game plan on you know the stains and right all that. i do the same thing i get myself like a, a surface to work out of and then can figure it out from there cool all right i'll leave you alone with the camera thank yeah. you while he's doing that you might have seen in several other videos we have the maxim is going to auction today the bmw is going to auction today the gmc sierra denali is going to auction today the alfa romeo is going to auction today so i've been picking apart projects and today's the day where it all finally comes together and then i can do one video after another video after another so you're gonna watch all these videos and then see other parts of other videos. I gotta get the foamy bath, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, no problem. What do you use for a soap? Right now I'm using uh, Maguire's Gold Glass. What is it called? Maguire's Gold Glass. Really? Yeah, you can get that like out of the... What do you spray it out of? Foam cannon. Foam cannon? We have our Tahoe getting paint corrected polish. I have made a video that was literally about why I would never buy a Hummer again. Why am I talking about a Hummer in a Chevy Tahoe video? Well, the Chevy Tahoe was a complete gamble it was a risk sometimes you win some sometimes you lose some this was a freaking loser now, i'm all jacked up on my escalade that i cut the roof off well i want to do it to a hummer i want to do it right cut the roof off the right way put a roll bar in have it done by next summer i already have my escalade i can enjoy it i can do this i bought this thing the cheapest hummer i have ever seen in my life forty six hundred dollars for it which is wild One hundred twenty thousand miles 2007 yeah it's rusty it's you know gross i bought it for 4600 dollars because it doesn't run and i thought six liter the engine's bulletproof what could go wrong the transmission's bulletproof like this i've had a gm mechanic here twice he can't figure it out the point of this segment is because sometimes you gamble and win sometimes you gamble and lose that tahoe is going to be an absolute score this hummer who the frick knows it's going to be a whole other video let's check out this tahoe look at this fender after a polish heck yes and then you can see some scuffs here and so here let's see if you can get those out let me sneak up on him see how he's doing it it looks done and it looks good these scratches are not here anymore it's amazing you got the scratches out what are you using for wax because even touching the door handle it just feels so smooth that's a uh, car pro essence car pro essence yeah. look at this the dogs owned this car this is why i don't put dogs in my car especially misbehaved dog that's why this looks like that i bet the dog chewed it up it makes a lot of sense that's the cleanest part of the car and it's probably because those were down all the time so the dogs could roam you got everything out of here Wow. Extractor or pick, what'd you use? Yeah, extractor, also different tools. I like your attention to detail, those lines are nice. Wow, so I bought a cover for that seat. I didn't even realize I need to buy a cover for this seat too. These were expensive. It looks amazing. It's a different vehicle. All right, I wanna talk a minute about subcontracting. I called them, beep, boop, beep, beep, rich. I need a car detailed, it needs paint correction. When you avail, I'll come out tomorrow. Perfect. It was $450, he was here for probably five hours. It's a lot of money, it was like almost 100 bucks an hour to have him detail a car. I don't know the time, like this car Car wouldn't have gotten done today because I don't have the time. So yeah, I would have saved $450, but this car wouldn't be done today because I was doing other things. And that's where you have to find the balance of what's worth paying people for, what's worth not paying people for. Write a check, 450 bucks. This car looks better than I could have made it. 
He used all his own products, all his own materials. He showed up with his own water. And now I do wheels, I do seats, I do repairs. We can list it for sale. Like he took the majority of the headache off my plate for $450. The other good thing is it's completely tax deductible. It's a write-off that by hire subcontractor. He owns his own business, his own S-Corp. So I write a check to his business. It's done. I don't have to pay, worry about payroll tax. I don't have to worry about unemployment tax and employment insurance, none of that stuff. So for the $450 I did spend, you're saving a lot of those things that you would be paying an employee had I had an employee too. And I mean, that guy's a hustler. Like he wants to get his job done as fast as possible and move on. Pay somebody by the hour, it doesn't happen as fast because they're getting paid hourly. You're not gonna get like a hustle like a self-employed person does. So coincidentally, having that that Tahoe that is plum purple, whatever you want to call that color, I have an Escalade that is the exact same color that I've already purchased a custom can of paint for to match, so I already have the paint for this Tahoe, which is amazing. This Escalade, way worse condition than the Tahoe. Well, in a different way. That video is coming out soon. Now on the topic of Tahoes, I actually have another one right here, a 2015 with about the same mileage. Actually, I think this one has 160, but the prices are starting to come down because of fuel prices, which is awesome. Now I was thinking I wanted to compare the carpet on this one and the seat. Like, look at how nasty these things are because they're family cars. Like, I, I don't blame them. My wife's car looks like this too, so I can't even compare the condition of the seats to the other one because because this is a bench seat as well. Yeah, these things just get so gross. That is nasty. How bad is it? Well, you need to get more vehicles like this. Great? No, ru no rust. You never say great. I know. <laughs> There's a little bit of surface rust, which is normal. But oh, it's filthy under here. Yeah, it's dirty. So I got a good one, huh? Yes. Jeez. No leaks, everything is full. Wow, this never happens. Brakes look recent? Yeah. Wild. Good tires. So I told you I had a parts Yukon over there. Seat belt buckles don't match up like these seat belts. So we have seat belt buckles, we have carpets, I have wheel and tire. It'll be a better product than when it was when we got it. All right, let's check it out. What have you come up with? A glued in here and a Home Depot is selling wall to wall carpet. This is definitely better. It's an improvement. Yep. So it is a start. Okay, let's do the wheel now. All right, wheel goes on now and that is gonna look darn good. And then that's it for the day. But what I do want to show you, if you come around this side with me, which you don't have a choice, these wheels are kind of scuffed up and scratched. So in some of the next clips, when I come back, because it's Friday afternoon, so Monday or Tuesday, I'm gonna polish those wheels and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get these scratches out of those wheels. Today's the day we finished the Tahoe. Now there was a little bit of bubbling in the paint right there, so we grinded it right down to the metal. We used a rust reformer to kind of like prevent rust from coming through, kill anything that was in there, but we grinded it deep. And we have color matched paint for this car that I bought for that Escalade right there. So if you go in cars, I've said this before, but some of you might be new viewers. If you go in your car, a lot of times right here, there is a paint code. Cars, GM cars, sometimes they're in the trunk. So if you look at your paint code, you can also Google your paint code or call your manufacturer. You can get paint to match your vehicle. Now I can get it in a custom can like this in base coat and then spray a clear coat over it if it's a big area. If it's a lower area that I want it done right, I can use a single stage, which has the clear coat in it. For a spot like that, that small, I actually got a custom can like this. So this is a SEM product that I got from my parts store that does paint and it does custom paint for cars, uh, body shop essentially. I gave them my paint code, Plumberry. They make me a custom spray paint can to this car. Now I'm not gonna go spray with a single stage or a base clear on an area this small. It's so little. If I use anything more than this, it's not gonna blend well. It's not gonna look good. Also, while I have this paint, there are some areas around the car that just have some scuffs. So we're gonna touch up those scuffs in the low areas. Don't ever use this on high areas. Like these scuffs, I wouldn't spray this. It's gonna be so noticeable. Anything in doors, side panels, hood, don't do it. This is for very small areas. Like don't ever touch these scratches up with something like this. It will be a disaster. But corners of bumpers, lower areas, this is great for, and that's what I'll use it for. We're also gonna finish the interior today. It smelled really, really bad like a dog like so bad you couldn't sit in that car so we extracted everything we used a steamer we did everything we could we conditioned the leather we cleaned the roof we wiped everything down the windows we got all the dog stuff out it still smells like dog really really bad so i have this thing ozonator like instead of o2 it's like o3 so it pulls in the oxygen and then turns it into o3 or something i don't know i'm not a scientist but i can tell you that it kills the odor in the car and makes it like clean like it's smells kind of like chlorine-ish, like the car smells clean. You go in and you're like, 
Oh, okay, it's not pungent anymore. So the car has no bad odor. You can see we did this seat cover, which looks really, really good. This one I didn't do, I didn't think it needed to be done. This one is my big concern. You can see the carpet, I'm still so unhappy with this, but it's like stuck on there now. I'm so unhappy with that. I couldn't find this seat cover anywhere, so. I have a freaking bath mat and a ripped seat on this car, which is completely unacceptable. I just don't know what to do about it. So bath mat, leather seat, due to parts shortage, due to labor shortage. I don't know what my other option is, but today we're gonna finish this car up. Okay, I wanna explain a little bit about body work here. Now, we grinded this right down to the metal with our angle grinder. Very easy to make this small spot this big. Like you can make it that big with no hesitation and it's gonna be a disaster. So the idea is to keep it really small. So Rasul behind me did a great job of just grinding, you can actually see where he grinded it down right there. So then I taped off the bumper and I put this piece of cardboard right there because I could very easily fill this gap accidentally. So I'm gonna put this cardboard right here and then I'm just gonna lightly fill this small area. Now you'll notice that I scuffed the clear coat, the actual body paint. The body filler isn't going to adhere to like gloss paint, especially a car that we've already waxed. So we had to scuff it with a Scotch-Brite pad. This right here is a Scotch-Brite pad. It's a scoring pad made by 3M. You just score your clear coat that way, paint or body filler can adhere to it. Now with the cardboard in here, it makes a nice straight line and I can just kind of feather it up, then remove this, then feather it across, then stick this back in again, and it kind of shapes and contours to my body. That's the first coat, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did because I should have videoed it on our second coat. Okay, look at how good the corner of this bumper looks right now. Why? Because I just dusted this stuff on. Again, I never wanna go high on the body. Like this scratch, I would never paint that. It would be a disaster. But low corners, like inconspicuous areas, this stuff is amazing for. So watch this right there. So see that scuff? I'm just going to dust it on. I'm gonna aim down because I don't wanna get on the taillights. Perfect match. It blends so well. Now I could gamble and kind of do this area, but that's like a 50-50. You can see the scratches right there. I might try it just to see, but it's that's a little higher than I'd like to be. And I'm not gonna paint the entire bumper, so you might just end up seeing a streak of spray paint right there. Corners are nice and easy blends. I'm a little too nervous to spray. See that right there? Let's see if we can get rid of that. Voila. Perfect, you would never know. Now I am getting close to the headlight. I know what I'm doing, be careful how you do this. You don't wanna get overspray everywhere. It's a lot of work to clean up over, but you can just, now you get an idea of how well this works. Like that area right there, I can dust it on, and I should have covered that chrome, because I'm gonna get it on the chrome, but you can see how I'm just dusting it. Now that spot is covered. I, again, I know what I'm doing, so I didn't get it on the chrome, but you should cover that off. I'm gonna gamble on this area. This blend is so good that I think dusting this on might make a big difference. Those scratches are disappearing. And you can kind of see that I'm fanning it because I want it to blend. I don't want to just go straight across and have a spray paint stripe. Yeah, I think that was worth it. We'll know better in the light, but that looks pretty darn good. Sometimes the blend in the paint is off a shade, so it doesn't match. Or your paint on an older car could have faded over the years. So you get a factory color and it's brighter or deeper or more vibrant than an old faded paint. You don't match that well. This one, spot on. Rasul is learning how to do body work, so this is the perfect opportunity for you guys to learn how to do body work too. So he just sanded this and I can feel a lip right here. So if this is not smooth for even putting the second coat over it, this will always be here. And as soon as I primer and paint over it, you will see that body work. The idea is to see no body work. So everything gets feathered in. I used to own a painting company. So like when you paint the walls, you have to spackle the walls, skim coat them, sand them smooth, then paint over the walls with a primer and then paint finish. The idea is to make it smooth. Same with body work and it's really, really important. So I can't have any lips, no edges right here with my finger. It needs to be completely smooth. So we're just gonna sand it one more time, then do one more coat of body filler, then we can prime it and blend the paint. So now that I've just done this, you can see the difference, right? Yep. You can see there's no more lip right there. I can't feel anything with my fingers. I can even smooth this edge out down here for prep for the next coat. And now we can do our second coat. A lot of people already know this, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, because some, again, some people are new and they've never done this before. When you're doing body work, I don't want to use so much Bondo. I also don't want to use too much hardener. So this is my body filler. And then this is my hardener. In the summer, if you use too much hardener, it dries really quickly. The heat makes everything warm up faster and then it dries fast. So you're actually working, you gotta kind of speed up your process if you use too much hardener. Now it's fall, so I can use a just a, a small amount of hardener on that spot. I don't need too much Bondo. 
and then I'm gonna mix it. The other thing I had just said to Rasool, you'll see this paint stick. There's some body filler with no hardener, there's some body filler with hardener. If I use this to mix it up, I'm gonna get these hard pieces in the body filler, and then I'm not gonna get a smooth coat when I go to apply this. So I always use a new stir stick to just kind of spread the hardener in the body filler, and then I'll use my putty knife or my knife to make everything smooth. Just keep flipping it back and forth until it's consistent and you don't see any gray or yellow or whatever color your body filler is. You want it to be one consistent layer. Now you will also have body filler on your knife, so make sure you sweep it off your knife and then get it back in the body filler to blend everything and make sure it's one consistent color so this is all set. All right, so you can see I didn't take too much body filler and I want this line to stay here. So I'm gonna stick my cardboard in there. I don't want this area to grow. Every coat you tend to get more and more, use more and more, and it gets to be a really big area. I don't want a lot of body filler. I'm just gonna go, and I actually wanna use this side. So I'm just gonna go up like that, and that's how I kept that area so small. I go up like this. I can remove that. You saw that I swiped it when I did it. When I swiped it, it brought the body filler off. Now I'm gonna get all the body filler off my knife. I don't want any up here because I'll get, then get it on the car. You'll actually see that I'm only gonna apply the bottom half of the knife lightly in a smooth coat. The more you use, the more you have to sand too, so keep that in mind. One other thing I wanna show you. I don't need to clean this knife off. I'm gonna get all the body filler up on the knife. I'm gonna flatten it and then flip it. I wanna leave it just like that because once this hardens, I'll peel it right off my knife which will help preserve my knife. And you're trying to clean the knife, it ruins the knife. So just leave it like that, nice and easy. And I'll show you when it peels off because it's somewhat satisfying too. And we did a thorough detail on this car and it's just a tremendous turnout. But even still, look at how gross. There are spots in there that were missed. Like all this is disgusting. And then going over here, yeah, all this is clean. Like the nastiness that was actually in the car on spots that I was missed. Just as a reminder, that's what this entire car looked like and the smell and everything is just so gross. Now look at that right there that whole area is obviously an eyesore when people come to look at it that's their first impression of the inside of the car so they go to get in the car and it looks like that so we're going to take care of that too because there's bare metal the first thing i'm going to do like we did scuff it i'm going to take a bare metal primer and this black will help darken the color too because it's going purple so the darker the color the harder it is to get the finish to match so we're going to just hit it with black first and then i can hit it with the factory color and this will be a significant difference when we're done. While we're at it, look at the engine too. Look at how nice this whole car came out. Peel the knife off and that's how clean it comes off. And then, peel it off like that, we have a clean knife. All right, now that the body filler is dry and hard, and I'm gonna try to sand it smooth, I'm gonna hand sand it, because if I use a DA sander, you can see the size of it. This thing is gigantic. There's no way I'm gonna get this smooth and not extend the body work up. Now I originally used 80 grit to get it down, and I'm gonna use a 220 over it to smooth it out. The 80 grit will leave swirl marks. 320 will smooth it out a little bit more than that. And I have a sanding block, which is gonna make it even easier for me. So you can see a smooth finish now. We can prime that and then paint it. Now before I prime it, I wanna show you something. You'll see that I made a tape line. This is not a hard tape line. If I make a hard tape line, you're gonna see where I painted and I'm not gonna paint this entire area. I actually layered the edges on the tape up, which is gonna allow the dust to go in and under and it's gonna kind of make smoother finish. Instead of, a, again, a hard tape line, I'm gonna have a nice feathered edge and I'm not gonna try to get this whole area. I'm gonna spray down. Test it right there and make it small. So you can see how smooth that finish is right there and nice small area, it's inconspicuous. So I sprayed some black primer to cover it so it helps blend with the purple. And I use a Scotch-Brite pad over the black primer to smooth that out, and then I can use a coat of the finished product. So you'll see I used a broader fan stroke, which is why, Rasul, you already know, but you guys now know, I fan the tape up so it catches the overspray instead of letting it just go across the entire car. So I ended up removing the tape here and then I blended it right over because there was a big scratch that went right there, which is now gone. I can remove this and you can see there's no tape line. That is just dust. So no tape line, perfect blend, and it matches with no bubbling rust. It is repaired. Last step to this Tahoe. It looks great, but these wheels are all scratched up. I don't know what the heck happened. Now, normally I'd say like a rubbing compound would bring it back to life, but they're not gonna bring that back to life. So before we even use the rubbing compound, I think these need to be wet sanded. Then we can buff them, then we can polish them. So we're gonna use like a 1500 grit on these to see if we can bring it back to life. Okay, so I have a piece of 1500 grit sand Paper. You don't want to dry sand it. So wet sandpaper. I'm just gonna wet the wheel and then I'm gonna hand sand it. And this will get out a lot of the scratches and swirl marks in the wheel. And when I'm done, 
I can rinse it off and I'm gonna use a buffing compound and then a polish after. All right, so now that it's wet sanded, I actually have a buffer that I would use, but most people have drills, so I'm gonna use a drill to make it a little bit easier for everyone else to see. So I have a rubbing compound here. I'm just gonna squirt some of the rubbing compound onto the wheel. Now my polisher is a little higher speed, so it's gonna work a little bit better. If you don't have a polisher, you can get these things at like Walmart, any store really. So I'm just gonna rub it on, because if I just spin, it's gonna shoot it everywhere. I rub it on real well. Now that's just a rubbing compound, real light. So I'm gonna wipe off the rubbing compound here and here, and then we can actually polish it too. But you'll see all my sanding marks are out. There's some real deep scratches in these wheels. So I'm gonna do it again, but these, this one's definitely not gonna be perfect. Now that we've used the rubbing compound, you can actually see how much better the wheels look, but we're gonna use a polish on it too. Now before I used a coarse pad, this is a wool pad, so it's nice and fluffy. This is better for polish, the other is better for scoring. So I'm just gonna put some finishing polish on the wheels, and this will not only protect them, but it'll a much better gloss. Work on so that'll protect your wheel, it'll polish your wheel, it'll give you a nice finish. Now, you remember what it looked like before. There are some real deep scratches, but they're polished and they look a lot better now. Finished product on the polished wheels after actually polishing them. This was the really bad one. This is the worst of all of them. You can see how good it came out. That one too looks amazing. And then we have a new wheel and that's why I had to polish these wheels because I don't want one brand new wheel and then three really rough ones. That's the brand new one. And this one is probably the best one. Look at how nice that wheel came out, all from a polish. Well, the Tahoe is done and we're gonna go for our final test drive. And unfortunately, after doing all this cleaning, it is raining. So we're gonna get this truck dirty now. I've said it a thousand times, this is the reason I don't like having pets in your car. Somebody just let their pets run their show, run the world in their home, and they destroy everything. Now I get it, some of you are pet lovers, I am not. I have a boxer, I love her, but she's still a pain in the butt and she's not allowed in my vehicles. This is why. This car was a disaster, but I'm gonna reap the rewards because it was so disgusting that I got it for a score. And now I'm gonna make a bunch of money on the back end for our hard work and our knowledge that we also passed on to you guys. Let's go do a walk around of this car before we end this video. Look at the finished product of this truck. This is the stuff that makes me love my job. I'm so bummed that it's raining and getting dirty now after all that hard work. This is quite literally the cheapest new body style Tahoe that I have ever seen and we bought it. Now I can easily wholesale this truck for $20,000 but I'm gonna list it for 25 locally and see how close to 25 we can get. The seat, I am not okay with the seat. So I'm, I'm gonna pull the seat cover off, we're sending it out to an upholsterer I found online, and they're gonna send it back to us repaired. So it's gonna have a brand new seat. I'm still, I have no idea what to do about the carpet though. This truck, finished product, is night and day from what it was when we bought it. Now here's the cool thing. What do we pay? Twelve, thirteen thousand dollars for it. We have a few thousand dollars of extra time, labor, carrying costs, overhead. I own this truck for probably under fourteen thousand dollars, and it's a $25,000 truck, between 23 and 25. So because we were able to, first of all, take a gamble, which stinks because I've lost lots gambling on cars. I have a Hummer and a BMW, both vehicles that I lost on because I took a gamble. But we're gonna make up for it on this one, and I, I'm not gonna lose on either of those cars. But here's what happens when you take risks, calculated, thanks to Laser Appraiser, because we now know what this car's worth way ahead of time before I even purchased it, and I also know what I can sell it for. I'm gonna list it everywhere. I'm gonna list it everywhere locally. I was planning on buying and wholesaling it. This truck is too nice to wholesale. Some family's gonna buy this thing and love it. It's a 5.3 that doesn't have any DOD or active fuel management problems that, that runs smoothly and quietly and shifts smoothly. That is a great family vehicle that I am pumped to sell to somebody. Now here we are on the inside. I left the driver's seat. That is a, kind of a bummer, but it, it is, it's a seven year old car with 129,000 miles. That is the passenger seat that absolutely needed to be done. The dash, everything, like look at how good everything came out. The carpets look good. The rocker panels look good now. The rust that was right here is non-existent anymore. It blended perfectly. The corners of the bumpers are perfect. And then going to the back, I'm gonna replace this. I cannot sell it. Like it's not acceptable. And the carpet, I don't know. I would love to hear what you guys would do about it. I really don't know. Check this out. So this seat cover just arrived off eBay. It is a perfect replacement for the Tahoe seat. Now I almost want to put it here because it looks, it would look better as a driver's seat, but I bought it in hopes that it would replace this seat because this was the worst one. 
They didn't make it for this seat though. They only make them for the driver's seat. So I got it hoping we can make it fit. I am pumped about this because someone's on their way to come look at the Tahoe. We haven't even had, had it for sale for a week. We've been gone for four days. Someone was approved for financing and they're on their way to look at it. I also want to show you something else with financing. Look at this. Freaking dog hair everywhere. It's everywhere. And Rasul was just blowing this thing out for probably the fourth time. And just dander was up in the air blowing everywhere. I could smell it in my office from that car. That's why I like, I know some of you are dog lovers, but we get the brunt of it. We have to clean up, clean up all the repercussions of dogs. Okay, so before we could even finish the car, it sold. I put it up online with some photographs. Somebody applied for financing last week. I got them approved and they showed up today with 12,500 in cash and financed the balance, which is amazing. This car came out incredible. We're doing plate, the inspection sticker. The only problem is I didn't finish the seat in time because it didn't fit. So we got the front seat done, which looks incredible here. Then we got the front seat done, which looks incredible here. That one, acceptable. This one, not done. So you'll see that one, that's the driver's seat cover that I put on it for now to make it like as best as I could. What we came up with, is I'm going to mail out that seat cover to the same upholsterer that made the two front seats and they're gonna make me a new seat cover for that. Keeping the seat here, we're gonna put the seat cover on. He's gonna come back and I'm gonna put his seat in for him. So all done. So we managed to figure out that problem. And just like that, Tahoe is sold. Crazy, crazy easy sale. I listed it last week. I went on holiday for four days. They submitted their application Friday. It went on sale on Thursday. And I got their approval Friday. They showed up Tuesday. It would've been closed until then with a bunch of cash and all the stipulations and he's gone, which you'll see here is the seat. I told him I will take care of the seat. I will call him when it's finished and I wanna show you something real quick for anybody interested. This right here is called a WEO form. You can Google them to get these documents. What is a WEO form? Well, I owe him something. So I wrote it down on the WEO form. It's literally that. I usually write we owe nothing and I have the customer sign it saying like, you're done after you buy the car. We don't owe you anything else. I didn't promise you anything else. That way, if they ever say like later on, hey, you promised me you would do this, I go back to the we owe form, this one right here, and it says, no, we owe you nothing. You signed on it. In this case, I wrote, we owe a seat cover. So I'm gonna replace the seat. That way he feels good about it. Like, hey, listen, I told you I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Here's the form for it. Sign it, take care of it. And I'll call you when it's ready, when it's here. And we're done. Now here's something even cooler. What? Stacks of hundred dollar bills. Dollar, 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 dollar. Bills, y'all. That's incredible. Now I had a feeling that I was underselling that car because why? Based on how many phone calls I got in one day in a 24 hour period. I listed on a Thursday, my phone blew up Friday and I was gone all weekend and it just exploded. So I knew I was underselling that car, which makes me feel not so bad about how terrible that carpet was. So I undersold that car. So I got the guy financed, and when I submitted the application, $25,000 I submitted the application for, I got a loan approval for two loans, two different loans, and I get to select which one. So for people like that wanna see the back end of the car dealer world, the bank actually said that I could sell this thing and they'd finance him for up to $32,000. So they are a better salesman or whatever you wanna call, it. I don't know, somebody that wants to take advantage of somebody. That bank would have allowed me to sell that car for $32,000 meaning I could approve somebody for up to 32K, another $7,000 more than I spent. Another $7,000 more than I sold it for, which is wild. I don't need to be greedy. I, I did really, really well in that car, and the guy that bought it was super cool, and you know, I made some money. How much money? Let's find out right now. 15 Tahoe, I paid $13,140 with auction fees. The wheel was $240. The seat was $140. The tire was $270. So all together, the seats were $320. The wheel was 240. The tire was 270. We had about $300 in miscellaneous auto repair work to make the car safe. So I have a grand total of, you ready for this? $14,270. I just sold it for $25,000. That's wild. That is wild. That's up there in the most money I've ever made on a car. And it's because I gambled because I took a risk. I've lost so many times, but every once in a while you get, you hit a number like that and that is incredible. All right, here's one other thing. It's eight o'clock at night. 
I missed family dinner. I didn't get to take my son to wrestling. I didn't get to watch him wrestle. I missed my daughter's soccer, all so I could sell this car. Granted, I made an insane amount of money, so I think it's justifiable. Is it worth missing the important things for the sale? You know, that's like something to think about as a parent or as a person, is it? What do you guys think for the money I made? Obviously it is, but you know, you gotta balance that stuff. Like what are you missing in your family life versus what's important in your business life? I have to do this so I can pay for my family life too. So you, you, it's important to find the balance. So you, some things you need to do, some things you don't need to do, find what's important on both sides and balance it out. I have a couple more things to do. We're gonna do it first thing in the morning. I gotta go home and get my son some dinner. So we'll see you in the next scene. So part two of our repo Chevy Tahoe series is over. We made an absolute killing on this car. And like I said, I am a calculated gambler. I'm a risk taker. I mean, I know what those things are worth. So even if it needed an engine or a transmission, I'd still be okay. I was not anticipating on it being as nasty as it actually is. We are going to start seeing a lot more repossessions in the near future because of overinflated prices in the market, market adjustments. I mean, people are paying $25,000 over MSRP new and like, things are starting to come down again. They're starting to regulate. We are going to be in a whirlwind of car effery soon. So stay tuned because I have a Cadillac Escalade video that's kind of the same story as this Tahoe, but it looks like it's hit everything but the lottery, if you get that joke. It is a disaster. That's gonna be coming up in the near future too. Thanks for watching. To get notifications every time we make new videos, you can hit the bell down below and subscribe. That way you can get to see us on your feed too. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later. Adios. Yeah.